TV News, expanding your view. Thanks for joining us again on Cool Digest Monday edition. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Now, the big question on the show today is what exactly is development like in your community, what is called the grassroots? What kind of relationship exists between your community and the political leadership in that area? Of course, we've been to Akwete. We were at Majidung in Ikorodu, and now we're going to a local government in Ogun State called Ifon. I'm joined this morning by Akide Abayomi, and he is a chairman, Riverview Residents and Stakeholders Association. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thanks. So, right, we're dedicating this particular episode out to you out there. In a short while, we'll open the phone lines to find out what exactly is development like in your area. Measure it alongside a good road, or, you know, what portable water, social and basic infrastructures, amongst others. And what kind of relationship actually exists between you and your political leaders in that area? What exactly is the situation like? What exactly are the challenges that you're facing in your community? You see, the part of uh, Ogun State that I live in, Riverview Estate, located uh, in Ifo local government, Ishere precisely. It's just, uh, uh, it's a border community between Lagos and Ogun. Okay. And um, our own case in Riverview, uh, it's uh, a peculiar one and uh, a pathetic one indeed. Uh, unlike um, these other communities, Riverview Estate, um, it's uh, a government estate the plots were allocated by the government of Ogun State. Mm. And uh, since we came into the estate, uh, there has been complete lack of government presence. Mm. We've tried on several occasions to get the attention of the government, you know, because this is an estate in which all residents pay what uh, they call development levy, ranging from a million naira and above. Mm. And some, in fact, paid tens of millions of naira, depending on the size of plots occupied. And so basically, we don't have any government presence whatsoever, whether local government, state government, or federal government, or, or whatever. <laughs> so uh, our own case is a very, very, you know, pathetic okay. Okay, situation. But, but this particular road we're seeing on yeah. our screen, what yeah. was it like? How did he get to this point? Was it at any time tarred? Or because I understand from what I can see there, possibly some uh, uh, leftover tarred portions at the entrance of yeah. that estate. Yeah. Uh, when did it get this bad? You see, um, this road, yes, the previous administration of, um, you know, in Ogun State, tarred the road to some extent. But it was a very, very poor job, we must admit. It was a very poor job. And uh, we as a community, we've been, you know, uh, we took it upon ourselves to maintain the road filled with laterite, sometimes with stones, and, you know, we've been doing that over the years. But uh, with the advent of rainy season, things got seriously bad. Mm -hmm. As we speak now, uh, in fact, uh, some parts of this road are so bad that uh, small cars cannot even pass through. Mm -hmm. You need a jeep in order to move, you know, on that road as we speak now. Mm -hmm. And we've tried very, very hard to get the attention of the government of Ogun State. Uh, this year alone, I think we have written three times to the governor. We'll get there, but, yeah. but, but the initial design of this road, yeah. did it come with a drainage facility when the road was initially constructed? Yeah, there was drainage facility there. But as I said earlier, it was a shoddy job. It was poorly constructed. And we must admit that fact. In fact, uh, I remember clearly when His Excellency the President was to come, you know, during the great flood of 2010, there was some cosmetics job done by the immediate past administration. You know, as it is common in, <laughs> you know, in this part of the world. And basically what they did was just, oh, let's create some kind of um, uh, 
uh, atmosphere of development for the, because the president actually did come to this estate, visited us. We had one-on-one -on -one interaction with His Excellency, the President, 2010. What did he say at that time? Well, basically, he came at that time to address the problem of flooding. And uh, he gave some promises that, okay, they were going to do some things by way of, um, uh, you know, creating uh, earth dams to take excess water from Onyo and the Keregoj dams. And, you know, probably because the election was coming then anyway, because since after the election, <laughs> you know, we didn't get to hear anything. But we as a community on our own, because we feel the... Are you saying that nothing has actually been done, even as we speak now, as regards the flooding challenge? No, the flooding challenge, nothing has been done, either by the federal or Ogun state government. It's probably only Lagos state government that seem to have some, uh, 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 some concern for its residents in terms of tackling this flood. Because mm -hmm. this flood we talk about is not even peculiar to Ogun state. It also affects Lagos state any time. You know, we have that problem. And uh, I must admit that uh, Lagos State people have been very wonderful. This year, I've been part of an entourage of officials of Lagos State government on a visit to the dam and to the management of the dam. And at every point, they've been showing concern. You see them getting uh, to gauge the river level to see, the, you know, advise the citizens of possible flooding, the measures to be taken and all that, but yeah. you don't get to see that from government of Ogun State. Is it possible that um, this challenge is uh, possibly coming at this time because this area is located at the border between two different states? Uh, I don't think so. I think the problem we have here, and I stand to be corrected, it's just because the present administration in Ogun State will have nothing to do with what the previous administration has done. I'm not a politician. I have never been a member of any political party. I have no sympathy for any one of the parties. But if we must say the truth, I think this present government just want to dissociate itself from whatever the other government has done. That is the only thing that I can see you know, that I can point to that uh, there's a reason why this government is neglecting this area. Because this area, in my view, and in the view of several others that knows about property, this location we are, oh, uh, this estate we are talking about, happens to be the best, the best land holdings of Ogun State government. And again, I stand to be corrected. You see, because of its proximity to Lagos, this is an area you cannot overlook. The place was well planned. And I think next to Otter, in terms of, you know, industries, because you see a lot of companies coming up, some mega companies, multi-billionaire companies being cited within this axis. Yeah. And already as we speak, Ogun State government is generating a lot of tax from this area. And yet Do people want in this to area anything. pay tax to Ogun State Oh, government? absolutely. Absolutely. Do you pay your tax to Ogun State government? I pay my tax to Ogun State. The people in this community pay their tax. In fact, I remember in 2011 when a commissioner came and he said, okay, in fact, I think a number of the officials of Ogun State government, they said, look, you don't expect us to uh, 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 to give you infrastructure if you live here and you are paying your taxes to Lagos. Uh -huh. I mobilized everybody, like uh, the Airport Fire and Safety Cooperative, for instance. There are quite a number of them, and many of them live around here. I mobilized them. Let's start paying our taxes to government of Ogun State. In fact, uh, just this year, the land use, I mean, the, 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 the grand rent or, that uh, Ogun State brought to that cooperative was 10 million naira. And uh, I'm aware, at least I am part of, uh, I'm aware that uh, six million already of that money had been paid. They structure it, you know, to make it convenient for them. So people here pay taxes to the government. We've told all the companies around, pay your taxes to Ogun State. You live in Ogun State. They take taxes from us, from the schools here, Nigerian Turkish International Colleges, Organ Guards, and several other companies. They, they collect taxes. But apart from this bad road you're talking about, are there all the areas of development where this community has felt government presence, maybe water, light, and other infrastructures? Absolutely, there is none. 
The electricity here will provide everything 100% by ourselves. This area, we have a peculiar problem because of the terrain, because of the soil nature here. We don't have uh, uh, good water. As an individual, you cannot sink a successful borehole here. Mm. Now, we wrote to the governor about this. He minuted the letter to the uh, general manager of the State Water Corporation. We've been following up. In fact, we said we are going to contribute for them to know because they were saying, are we going to pay? We are we're not going to see it as a social service that we are not going to pay for. Say, we are willing to pay. We are going to pay. And to demonstrate our commitment, we task ourselves. We raised over 5 million naira as counterpart funding, so to say. You know, for us, to, for them to know that we are going to pay. Take this money. We have the money in the account. That we are not looking for free service. We just want the Ogun State Water Corporation, the government, through the Ogun State Water Corporation, to provide us water. No water. No roads. Everything is in complete shambles. So if there is no water in this community that you're talking about, uh, uh, Riverview Estate, right? yeah. Estate. Yeah. how do you not get water? We have to buy a tanker. We bought a tanker. And uh, we now, you know, go around and uh, some other private uh, tankers used to come around to supply us, you know, water, uh, you know, within this area. That is the only way we get. What practical steps are, have you taken to speak with government agencies and political leaders in this area to ensure that this road is fixed? Look, since the inception of this administration, uh, I think we have written not less than seven letters, private letters to the governor. Mm. And we have equally in frustration published at least four of those letters mm. in the media, the punch specifically, because we are not getting any response, no feedback, nobody. It was only once that the, the only time we had audience with any, you know, member of the administration was when the commissioner for works oh sorry please uh, commissioner for housing when he called me to say he want to have a meeting with us he gave about three appointments that he was coming to have a meeting he, he didn't come that was as a result of our publication and by the way we pop, we learned we saw a publication that the other side of the road was going to be developed into a mega estate by a state government. And so we were picked that this same government that, you know, is telling us that uh, we are sitting on a, on a, uh, on a uh, wetland, on water parts, that they want to develop that place. But they were telling us the reason why they were not coming was because this place is inhabitable. It's seated on a water plain and all that. So why do they want to develop that place. So we wrote in the papers that we are going to oppose the development of that place. I guess that was the reason why the Honorable Commissioner for Housing called me. And when he gave three promises he was going, he was going to come and he didn't make it, we said, okay, we will come and meet you. And we went to his office and I think we succeeded in meeting him after waiting for about four hours. We that was when? That was uh, last year. It was last year, I guess, yeah. We succeeded in meeting him, and he told us, okay, we should bring our letter, things that were not relevant, if you ask me. Letter of allocation to be sure that we pay for the land, and I said, I don't know who gets government land for free. We gathered the letters of allocations, as many as we could get, we sent to him. He said, we'll get back to us, but we haven't had anything. We've been calling and calling him. In fact, we met Brick Wall. And I tell you, I've met Commissioner for Works in Ogun State over this. Uh, I've met two commissioners for environment, commissioner for physical planning, over the challenges of this place. The governor, we made several efforts, you know, to have audience with him. And, you know, it's, it's basically so, uh, impossible. By the way, we are making plans to uh, reach out to the commissioner of works in Ogun State on this program, possibly we can, you know, speak with him over the phone, just before the end of this show. But then, what local government is this area under? in Oko State. This is under if for local government. Does that local government doesn't have a does it not have a chairman of its own? Yeah it does. Uh, the chairman is uh, Mr. Enilo Lobo. Have you in any way spoken with this? Well I went there person? on about two occasions. Unfortunately, you know we couldn't see him. But the point is this this is purely a state problem in my view. The problem we have here is what 
a state government because we paid infrastructural development levy to Ogun State. Ogun State collect our money for infrastructural development, and it is the responsibility of Ogun State. And I'll tell you this. You see, uh, to tell you the importance of this place and how uh, well, I don't see any reasonable government, you know, we want to neglect this area. Now, we have several companies, as I said, that are doing so well and that are mega companies that are located within this estate. Yeah. Uh, last year, a German firm came around. They want to establish what they said was going to be the largest tiles manufacturing company yeah. in Africa. And they located a place, but the problem was the issue of, of the road. Yeah. And they were saying that, uh, they were asking, can you give us any guarantee that this road is going to be fixed? But I'm not in position to give any guarantee. We've been pursuing this government since they came into being. We've been pursuing them. We did everything possible to get government attention to, you know, but, so the man said, look, there's no way, the, the company, they came, you know, it was a team. But there's no way they are going to, you know, cite any company here. Myself and a couple of other Nigerian businessmen, we went to Turkey last year, and there are some, good prospects, some good companies that we thought this area, you know, because we are even making efforts to get pi gas pipeline along this axis. There are several companies, Lebanese, Indians, mm. you know, that wants to come to this area. And we've been making a lot of efforts, but the problem is infrastructure. There is no reasonable, and this is an area where the government stands to make a lot of money. But I don't know where else in the world a governor will choose to say that I have nothing to do with this area because the previous administration, you know, maybe some officials had interest in that area. No, but how would you know that since you said you've not gotten the feedback directly yes. from the governor? Yes. Uh, how would you be sure that that's the reason why okay. the I'll, development is not happening here? When the governor was sworn in in 2011, I think, yes, uh, he called the meeting. And I was part of that meeting at okay. Oba's complex in Abe Okuta. And uh, he said, uh, by the way, the meeting was not because of this Riverview estate. It was Just a because minute. Just hold that thought. Let's take this call from Ilore. Good morning, Edou. How are you today? I'm fine. Good morning. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead with the contribution, please. All right. I just want to contribute to this on game program. And this actually shows us the responsible, how insensitive these particular people that tag themselves progressive people are. Can you imagine a, a very big estate like this? I know where my gentleman is talking about. I know where the estate I mean, is located. A very fine place, very suitable for company's location. And as a matter of fact, the same thing is actually happening in the Lorry where I am speaking right now. There's a particular place we call it an in the Lorraine. In fact, even inside the Lorraine metropolis, the place is called the Tanamu. No access to water. As a matter of fact, no road. The place is just abandoned. And the test coming whenever any election is coming on, that they need to do this, they need to do that. At the moment they are voting into power, they easily forget the place. Going to government office, to even lay home, you can go there 20 times without meeting them. After you must have waited for 20 hours, then the time the, to go that the government is not available to meet you. These people are just irresponsible. Please tell them. Thank you. All right, thank you for your contribution, Ido from Ilori. Of course, you too can be a part of the program. Let's know what the challenges are in your community and how far the development has reached your own area. You were talking about, I asked you how sure you were yep. that the governor of Ogun State intentionally is not interested in this area just because of um, not continuing what the previous administration did. You see, he called us uh, to a meeting when he became the governor and I was part of that meeting. Mm. Uh, there is an estate also called Hillcrest in Abel Kuta that also was started by the previous administration. And he gave a lot of promises. In fact, there was a particular gentleman there that uh, I think was retired head of service in Ogun State that said he was going to collect back his money because he does not understand why he has to pay and the government will not do anything. And the, pro the governor gave a lot of promises that, look, I'm going to do this. In fact, you are going to regret collecting back your money. But if you want to have your money, I will ask them to pay you immediately. Right. And uh, I think the gentleman elected to have what, as we speak now, 
as we speak now, nothing happened. And I sought to make inquiries because I have interest in that place. I'm an Egbaman, I'm from Abelkuta, and that's where I intend to have my country home, you know. And, uh, but unfortunately, since then, nothing has happened. I sought to find out. I know a few things that goes on there. I may not be a politician. I sought to find out. But it is really nothing other than the fact that the governor has decided that whatever the previous administration has his hands on, it's not going to be part of it. That this, is why we are suffering. It's all right. How motorable is this particular road that we're looking at on the screen? I guess this must have been shot uh, a couple of uh, uh, a couple of weeks back. It, it, it won't be a recent shot, if you ask me. I, I don't know. But the fact is that I guess this road is even worse now. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, but this appears to even... This is a fairly good part of the estate. Yeah. You need to get uh, from the express, the fat beams, and yeah. you know, go through that area. You will see it's an eyesore, yeah. a complete mess. Yeah. You know, uh, some people are calling me. What are we going to do about this road? What are we going to do? We've been spending money to maintain, you know, to do some remedial work. But how far can? A community go. Mm -hmm. I was going to get that because you know there's a popular saying that think not what your government can do for you, yes. but, but what you can do for your country. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that saying apply to this road and this community? One of the things we, you know, decided to do, I personally wrote to this administration at its, at the inception that look. We are going to even pay more in terms of infrastructural development. The government charged us infrastructural development, which all of us paid. Yeah. But looking at the reality on the ground, we want to be, it's unheard of for people to write the government and say, okay, we want to pay more on the land you, have, you already sold to us. Yeah. We said we want to pay, charge us infrastructural development for you to be able to develop this place. We know there is a future in this place. We know this place has a lot of prospect. Charge us more. No feedback, hmm. no response. The people are willing to contribute. As we speak now, our people contribute millions of naira to even make this place livable. And I'm talking in literal terms. People are tired now. Because you ask them to give for this, to pay for this, to pay for that, to do the road, to do the road, to do the road. And by the time this road, uh, rain ends, we'll probably, you know, be looking at, uh, you know, we got some corporate stakeholders together. Let me quickly chip in this. We got some corporate stakeholders together. Uh, and in fact, uh, that... Sorry, let me just hold you there for a while. Just hold that thought. Don't, okay. don't lose that trend. We have another caller here. Hello, good morning. Alaji Ramo. Good morning. Are you there? Alaji Ramo from Ofa, 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 Ofa. Hello, are you there? I'm not from Milani, please. Okay, well, please, where are you calling from? Of Farquara State. Of Farquara State. We apologize for I, that mix-up. I'm not Milani. Please go ahead with your contribution. Uh, in terms of development of roads, uh, you see, the problem we are having with these politicians nationwide, most especially this, I don't know what to all these politicians. It was when they are trying to farm it, they will see it and have it. They get there, you won't see any development. No, 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 So it's a very, very sad, very sad, very sad. Very sad. I don't know what is wrong with them. Eh? They will promise seven and a half. Maybe they get there, that's all. They won't see any kill again. Eh? And it was when a week or two weeks is coming. Eh? Then we start coming again. And eh, we have to do this, we have to do this. Break, okay, eh, back to you. I, don't know, yeah. I, don't know. I was talking about uh, getting the corporate stakeholders together. Mm -hmm. We did that. We had a meeting with the corporate stakeholders. And we choose um, uh, a British man, in fact, a a, 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 a commander of the British Empire right. to share that committee mm. on road rehabilitation. But let them take an assessment and just do a minimal repair. And they came up with a figure of about uh, eight or nine million naira. Just, you know, some pash pash work here and there okay. to make people pass through. But the point is this. We have, uh, you know, heavy vehicular movements. Like, it might interest you to know that DHL, 
has its haulage hub within this estate and in fact they are 85 percent responsible for the state of our road i'm still going to come to that if you permit yeah. and uh, we gather these uh, corporate stakeholders together and uh, uh, this man the british man uh, coupled with uh, some other white men i know there is a turkish on that uh, and they came up with the figure about uh, eight million or thereabouts but an individual that has uh, a, a company also within the premises. He wants to move some sensitive equipment into his company. It was a massive company the guy has. And he now asks some people to do assessment on what it's going to take to fix this road properly. And they gave him a figure of 60 million naira. Right. And, uh, and that is just to fix a little part of it, you know, just for the equipment that he wants to move in because of the sensitive nature of the equipment. The guy is, in fact, in a fix. Yeah. That, look, I have finished this factory. Now to get the equipment installed, the guy wanted to install the equipment since January. The factory was due to be commissioned in March. But up to now, the equipment, as we speak now, could not get to the, to the site of... Uh, so they gave him a bill of 60 million that what we are thinking of doing is not even going to allow for easy movement of those trucks. Okay, you're saying categorically that um, repairing this road is beyond what the people that live there Absolutely, can do. absolutely. It's beyond us. It is what government is going to do. And I tell you, government is going to generate back his money. We are not looking for a free service. We are willing to partner with the government. Every resident in this community, every, every business in this community. In fact, um, uh, a chief executive of one of the companies, I said, look, can we gather like about 10 companies together with each of us giving 10, 10 million naira? That is going to pay 10 million. I said, I'm not sure. I'm going to be able to have the support of every company to pay 10 million. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have some viable companies. We have some very good companies. But are they willing to part with as much as 10 million to, for repairs of this road? He said, what if you have five? I'm going to give you 20 million. Uh -huh. I mean, to tell you the kind of passion some of these people have. That, this is not an area you can neglect. It is just because of intellectual indolence on the part of those who are in government that you will look at an area like this and you will say it doesn't matter. It does matter. This area is such an area that any responsible government will not toy with. So right. Aside from its potentials of generating revenue for the government, the companies springing up here could potentially employ several thousands of indigents. In fact, we are talking to some of the companies that they must employ people living within the locality, and they agreed. So right. let's quickly take this call from Abdul. Good morning, Abdul. Hello? Let's go ahead with the contribution. Good are you there? Hello, Abdul. We seem to have a lot of callers from Lauren this morning. Please try us again and be able to turn down the volume of your TV while you do that. You said earlier in your opening remarks that people who live in this area, if for local government yeah. or Ogun State to yeah. be precise, pay tax yeah. to Ogun State yeah. and possibly some development levies. Uh, are, sure. Do you pay that to an office? Yeah. Are there people there who represent the state government in their quarters? Have you taken your grievances to them? I have. There is a di director general as well as uh, the special advisor to, govern, to the governor on lands. The successive, by the way, this is the second director general uh, sec uh, and special advisor that the, government, uh, the governor will be having since his inauguration. The first, the lady, Ron Kesho Kefun, we made representation to her. She didn't promise anything, and uh, we thank her for that because she did not raise her hope. <laughs> but this present one promised a lot, but delivered nothing. In fact, we went there also. We had a meeting with him. We, I gathered the executive, the board of trustees, the stakeholders. We had a meeting with him. What we thought was a profitable meeting, he gave a lot of promises, but our hopes are dashed. Yeah. He promised that he was going to visit us. Uh, he, he never did. And... Uh, in fact, to be honest with you, many of our stakeholders, you know, they feel that they love the previous woman more than the person they are now. So uh, let's take this you know? caller from Abe Okuta, the Ogun State Capital. Hello, Tessie. Good morning. 
So that's the ayuda. Okay, please try to call us back. We'd we'll love to get callers from you as we focus on community development this morning at the cry of the people. We want to find out what development is like in your area where you live if you have access to good road, potable water and several other basic amenities in your own area. Now, let us put all of these things together. Now, we've talked about the role of what what you have done as a people resident in this area and um, what government you know has not been able to do in yeah. a short while what do you think is the way forward at this time uh, have you given up completely on the Ogun state government well i don't want to say we have given up we still have hope and uh, rather than the government seeing us as uh, being antagonistic they should see this as a cry from a frustrated heart. To be honest with you, uh, in the past uh, three months or so, I know of two stakeholders that have had to buy jeep in order for them to go in and out of their homes. Yeah. We are frustrated. People are asking me questions that I cannot answer. I'm not in government. I uh, am a community leader. I lead the people and we take their grievances to government. But what can you do? when the governor is not even willing to listen. And by the way, I find this very, very strange that the governor or the government that claim to represent people, uh, you can't have access to your representative. But is it possible in yeah. any way that yeah. probably the governor doesn't even know anything about this? Uh, the governor cannot claim not to know anything about this. Have you met because, with him personally? Well, not uh, on this matter. We've not been privileged to have audience with him as far as this matter is concerned. So how sure are you that he knows about well, it? Well, 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 except if he does not read paper. If he doesn't, his uh, aides must have brought this to his knowledge. And in fact, the Honorable Commissioner for Housing that called me as a result of the publication we made last year, he said he has the instruction of the governor to talk to us. That's all right. Let's take this call from Lagos. Good morning, Olawale. Hello, good morning, sir. Good to have you. Go ahead with your contribution, please. And good morning. The little contribution which I don't have to say is that these people, they are feeling already. Hello, are you, are you, are you still with me? Yes, yes, I am. Hello, are you with me? I am. Go ahead, Olawale. Okay, I'm senior now. I'm supposed to know that every government that feel to do its responsibility election is coming next year, such as we voted out. And, the, and then for the little one, any, any, any government that is coming in that cannot be guaranteed of the welfare of the people, it is fear. It's all right. Thank you for your contribution, Olawale. He's taking that higher and, you know, more politically ahead of 2015 elections. But then, how sure are you that Governor Ibukula Amosu of Ogun State knows about what you're going through in your community? The Honorable Commissioner for Housing told me specifically that he has the instruction of the Governor of Ogun State to speak to us okay. on the issue of infrastructure. He asked us to bring some things, as I said earlier, which I don't consider relevant, a letter of allocation to be sure that the land was not given to us for free as political patronage or something. Yeah. And I gathered as many letters of allocation I could gather. When the delegation we waited for several hours, we eventually saw him. We presented the letter, but more than a year now, we've not heard anything from him. Yeah. So if the governor is not aware, I don't think he will have you know, told us that uh, he has instruction of the uh, governor to call. It's yeah. all right. So uh, just in case the governor is watching this show now, <laughs> what would you have to say to him? Well, what I will have to say to the governor is to appeal to him. The governor of Ogun State. Of Ogun State mm. as the leader of, you know, uh, the people. And uh, I want to take it personal in the sense that I... Uh, I admire the governor a lot, but what he is doing presently to us, as a result of his political differences with his predecessor, leaves much to be desired. He should have a rethink. Let him come to Riverview Estate. The, some of his official told us that uh, Riverview Estate is on, you know, water level, water plain, and all that. 
It's, this is not a rocket science. This permit with the courtesy of the game. Let's take this call from Tessie. Good morning, Tessie. Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good morning. Please go ahead with your contribution. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Tessie. Go ahead with your contribution. I, I really appreciate uh, what uh, I really love your program. I really love it so much. Uh, in the man that is there, I really appreciate your effort. Your effort. I really appreciate it. Please, please, think where you can help us to beg government to do something about this road. As I am talking to you, where, where I live, you can't, the road is worse. Now that it's raining, we cannot even, we cannot even go to work, it's worse at um, Quarry Road. Please, really appreciate your program. I am begging, I'm appealing. You should be able to help us, any way that will help us, so that it will be, I, I don't even know what to say, because I'm just tired of this government thing. Please. <laughs> It's all right. Thank you very much, Tessie, for your contribution. You also have the opportunity to call in on the show this morning. The number's right there on the screen. Let's find out what your unique challenge is, the unique challenge you're facing in your community as regards infrastructure. You were, I was going to ask a question, but just quickly round up on your contribution. I was asking you if the governor is watching right now, they're going to stay governor, what you would have to say. Yes, to I was saying that, uh, you see, they should stop this lazy uh, excuse that uh, the place is waterlogged, there's been flood all over Abelkuta. I watched the governor on TV visiting several areas in Abelkuta, the penultimate uh, Wednesday. There was no single flood here. So what are they talking about? Are they going to ask all the people in Abelkuta that were affected by flood, they want to drive them out? They, did we, we did not have any single incidents of flooding here when, the, when much of Abelkuta was underwater last Wednesday. There was no water here. We have been able to manage some of these things on our own. And so they should stop looking at it. And besides, let us even assume that it's a water plain. Amsterdam is below sea level. This place is six meters above sea level. And you can, well, for those of us who have had privilege of going to Amsterdam, been to Venice and have seen what pragmatic leadership, you know, what impact pragmatic leadership could have on the life of citizens. So they should stop these lazy excuses. This is a gold mine for any government in Ogun State. If they allow all the companies that want to come here to come by providing infrastructure, I tell you, this will be number one cash cow in terms of revenue generation for the government of Ogun State. So many companies are lining up. So the governor should look at this place, not from political point, but let him look at it from strategic, as somebody that has the interest of Ogun State at heart. And I'm not saying this because I live here. I could afford to live elsewhere. By the way, I moved from my house to this place, and I have elsewhere that I could move to. But I'm talking of, as an Ogun State man, this is a potential gold mine. An Ogun State government knows it. That is why they want to develop the other side of the road. It's all right. Let's call, uh, take this call from David from Akute. Good morning, David. David, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Go ahead with your contribution. Yes, I'm here, please. Yeah, good. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Go ahead with the contribution. Hello. Go ahead, David. Yes, I'm, I'm complaining about our road. Ishafi Road, Ishafi Akute. Hello. Ishafi Akute. That's in Lagos, I guess. Hello. Oh, in Ogo State. It's all right. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'm calling that set of Ishashi Road, the Akute. The it's all right. Road is completely bad. Flooded with water. Mm. And there's no access to that road at this moment. Time, at this moment. The road is so bad that the bridge between Dero and uh, Adibolodja Adib Oluwakemi is completely bad. The it's bridge right. is over overflooded with water. And okay. there's no way we can move through that road. A lot of vehicles break down along that road. It's a complete write-off. It's all right. I think you made your point there. Thank you very much for your contribution, David from Akute. From the course of that, Quarry Road in Abelkuta, 
this man just made venture to Ishafi Road by Akute. Yeah. Possibly the River View challenge might not be independent in Ogun State, might not be an exception after all. How does that justify your idea that maybe government intentionally has neglected this area? Well, it is uh, this, the areas they are. Uh, the scholars, we do apologize to the callers. You see, the area they are talking about are basically land bought from maybe omoniles and land speculators. We are talking of a government residential scheme. Mm. An estate designed by the government, the land sold by the government. We paid money for the land, for survey, for infrastructural development to government. So this is an exception. Ogun State Provide government. Ogun State government. But so not this under is completely this, different. This from, particular administration. Not under this, but it doesn't matter. We did not pay money to an individual in, uh, in government. We mm. paid the check that all of us raised was in favor of the government of Ogun State. So it doesn't have to be any particular administration. Mm. This government is under obligation as of the time of inception of this administration, all the assets and liabilities of Ogun State. They inherited. But what was the condition like under the former administration? Well, the condition like under the for, the condition under the former administration was not better off. And when we were making noise at that time, incidentally, that government said that we were agent of opposition. Eventually, the opposition came to power. <laughs> we became orphans. You know, that was what they were saying. And in fact, with due respect to the former administration, the governor at that time, he listened to us. On about two occasions, we had audience with him. He came here, we sat him down, we hired canopies, we discussed, and uh, uh, he told us some lies, and uh, he left. But, but, uh, so the condition basically was not different, but at least the governor then listened. Yeah. But here, you don't even have anybody to talk to. You feel like an orphan. The previous administration said, oh, you are agent of opposition. You are being sponsored by opposition. Yeah. And I don't know any politician among us, to be honest with you. If they, if they are, Probably there are few, it's but I don't right. know of any. We have another caller from Akute. Good morning, Blessing. Blessing, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, I'm calling from Akute. Yeah, go I'm ahead, here. please. Okay. Yeah, I'm calling from Akute. Adero. Yeah, I'm complaining in respect of the road. Somebody just called and complained about that road. And uh, I think your correspondent on the telly was saying something that the road is not a major road. Um, I want to say the road is a major road and the access route to everybody living in this area. So I think you don't you don't live really close to this area and you don't know what's going on. So I think maybe you guys should come and see by yourself and know what we're talking about. The bridge is so flooded to the extent that even if your car goes in, the water comes to your door level. You get normally you normally take buses from they got to Akuti at 100 naira, but now they charge, charge us 200, 150 to get to our houses. And sometimes we don't get bus, we don't get cars that come to that area. And it's very bad, so we're asking those in charge to come and check the area very well. I know what we're talking about, we're already suffering in this area. Thank you very much, Blessing, for your contribution. Okay. Akinde Abayome is not our correspondent. Now, maybe I should introduce him to you properly again, Blessing. He is a community leader and the chairman of Riverview Residents and Stakeholders Association. And he is here today to speak as regards the condition of the road and some other infrastructure in his own community. I'm not sure he said that your road is not a major road. I think he was just trying to say that where he lives is a government-owned estate. Of course, everybody knows where the shoe pinches more and all of that. But then, you know, we're talking about uh, how we can put an end to all of these challenges that we're facing. We're rounding up now. What do you think should be done? What active steps should be taken at this time? Also bearing in mind that it's a raining season. Can the job be done at this time? Yeah, the job can be done at this time. Julius Beja that is working on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, <laughs> they have not quit. They are still working. The job can be done if only the government is serious. What we are even saying, we are not asking the government, come and develop or fix all the roads in Riverview Estate. Yeah. We are just asking for just that major road from Fat Games Filling Station down then the other one that enters into the estate. Just, just, just the two roads we are asking for. If the, governor, if the government can do that for us, that is what we are talking about. We know that uh, uh, there are 
a number of challenges in other communities. And we are not under illusion that government can provide everything. Oh. That is why we've been doing everything on our own. Okay. But we are saying, let the government from the Fat Beans filling station, the road parallel to that Fat Beans, let government fix it. There are a lot of industries springing up along that axis. And then into the estate, just those two. It's okay for us. And of course, we need water, which only Ogun State Water Corporation can provide. We've been making noise. We've done everything we could to make sure we have water. I, in my own house, I spent over 1.5 million, and yet I do not have any water of uh, drinkable quality. I still buy water to drink. Some other houses are not even that lucky. You know, they spent even more than I've spent, but they could not even have the water. They could not get water good enough to bath or to take their bath, you know, because of saline and the uh, 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 iron content of water within this axis. So you we made mention of the DHL the other time. What's their stake on this road? Well, DHL, you see, uh, I am very sorry to say they have been very responsible corporate citizens. DHL contributed 85% of, uh, you know, to, to the state of our road now. They move heavy trucks in their hundreds. Their haulage hub is located within this estate. And we had a meeting with them. Personally, I led a delegation to meet with the country uh, manager of DHL. We met with the uh, workshop manager who claimed that uh, he feel like we were putting a gun to his head to fix the road. We are not putting a gun. You are not doing anything. Since you came with this volume of business, you damaged all the roads. You made the road completely and totally unpassable. In fact, I regret the fact that uh, the, the, the worst part of the road is not being shown on this screen, you know, because we have an area where no small car can even enter. And that is the major road that leads to estate. These are internal roads that you are seeing, uh, that I'm seeing on the screen here. Yeah. The major road, which is the worst affected of all the, of all the roads, is not being shown. DHL contributed 85% to the state of that road, and they are not doing anything. We've been making noise, we've gone to them, maybe by the time we gather ourselves together and picket the company and made it possi impossible for them to operate, they will take us serious. So, Rada Kida Bayomi, thank you very much for finding time to join us today on thank Cold you so Digest. as the chairman of Riverview Residents and Stakeholders Association. We're hoping that possibly tomorrow we'll be able to, uh, of course, feature the Commission of Works in Ogun State as regards the state of this road and what's been done by government, you know, about these roads. Of course, we caught earlier, uh, we got calls earlier from Abel Kuta, and the lady was talking about Quarry Road, which she says is presently is in a bad state. Another, about two other callers also made mention of the Ishafi Road by Akute, which is very, very getting, getting so bad. He actually said that the transport fare has risen tremendously in recent times and oftentimes they do not even get buses to commute them back to their homes and we hope that the government is out there listening in now now they say that the primary responsibility of every government is security and the welfare of the people especially as we begin to come down to another election year it's about time for each government and of course each political leader to start taking stock of what such as done for his people. Yet uh, that wraps it on Cold Digest today. I'll be back, God willing, tomorrow for another interesting edition. We're hoping to get uh, someone from the government elect side in AKT as we begin to also talk about crisis in the judiciary in that area and other emerging stories as regards community development. I'm Nifemi Okunsoye. Thanks for watching. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News.